Hi everyone. A couple of weeks ago, I got that message on a video about the efficiency of the Ionic EV28. I'm sorry, but who goes 100 to 110 on the highway? I would really appreciate someone making a test how it really looks in a normal road conditions. Everyone is fascinated how efficient those cars are at 80 to 90, which is beep, be realistic. Well, Quite luckily, I'm a geek, and like pretty much everyone else, I've had a diesel car before. That means I have also recorded data from the diesel car that we had before. A very good, efficient car, 7,500 kilometers of driving, and we recorded the trip summaries, so about 100 of those. And we are going to use that to take a look at the efficiency of the diesel car, and we are going to compare to the EV for which we've got 300 hours of data recordings, which is the equivalent of 20,000 kilometers of driving. So let's start with the diesel car and let's look at the consumption curve as a function of the speeds. We've got how many liters per 100 kilometers have been consumed as a function of speed in kilometers per hour. Now, in that case, it is the speed reported by the car, and therefore it's not a GPS speed. So it might be a little bit higher than the real GPS speed. It won't make much of a difference. Each dot is a little trip, a leg of a trip, a recording, okay? The red curve is therefore our diesel car consumption as a function of the speed. You can see that the optimal speed is somewhere around the 70 kilometers per hour, which is quite marvelous because I could be amazed by the efficiency of this car at 70 kilometers per hour. This doesn't mean you would be driving it at 70 kilometers per hour. Now, having said that, five liters per 100 kilometers is still very efficient, it's still very good, and that you can achieve at 100 kilometers per hour. Probably goes up afterwards, but again, sadly, I didn't have very much data beyond 110 kilometers an hour. So in real life, you don't drive at an average of 130 kilometers an hour. Let's now look at what that curves mean if we are looking at this in a common currency. And it is quite easy to translate that because a liter of diesel is about 10 kilowatt hours worth of energy. So the beauty of the diesel car is that it's using an energy that's super dense. That's why it's so convenient is because when you carry 10, 20, 30, 40 liters of diesel, you've got massive amounts of energy in your tank. We're now looking at the same curve, obviously, but it's expressed in watt hours per kilometer. We've got anything between 400 and 1000 watt hours per kilometer for the diesel car. The next thing we do is bring back on top of that the curve for the EV. And if you want to check out the video, click on the top right corner. So there we have it. We've got both curves now on the same graph. You still have the red curve, which is the diesel car. And you've got the green curve, which is the EV. But wait, what did we just do here? We seem to have two axes, one for the diesel car and one for the EV. So surely we should be using the same axis and bring them back on just the one chart. Now, of course, if we are using the same currency and the same axis for both of them, the story is quite a bit different now. The EV efficiency is, of course, reduced when you have the higher speeds. On that same axis, the red curve is quite a bit higher than the EV. So when you look at the energy consumed by a diesel car, even a very efficient one at that, you've got a multiplying factor because the best you will ever get is about 450 watt hours per kilometer for the diesel car when you're looking at something like 110 watt hours per kilometer on the EV. 
I think that puts in perspective this whole notion that, oh, those EVs consume an awful lot of energy when they are going at the faster speeds. Well, even if they hit the 200 watt hours per kilometer, or for a big SUV, you may be looking at 300 watt hours per kilometer, this is never going to be touching the best possible efficiency of the diesel car. Let's do one final check, and we are definitely in dreamland now. We have decided that we are shifting the red curve down by 330 watt hours per kilometer. So as if we had found a way to make diesel much more efficient across the piece by shifting that curve down. In other words, we are saying, what if the diesel car was just as efficient as the EV at their common speed for best efficiency, which is 70 kilometers per hour? Well, in that case, even when you look at how the diesel evolves from there, the additional consumption for going faster is in fact higher on the diesel car. The differential, the how much more is necessary for the diesel car, is in fact going higher on the diesel car. So even if you consider this notion that at the higher speeds, the EVs are less efficient and they definitely are less efficient. On this example of two cars in real life, we are seeing that the loss of efficiency in terms of energy is in fact much worse with the diesel car. So all of that, not to say that diesel cars are bad and EVs are fantastic. The point of this is to put in perspective the fact that yes, of course, EVs are consuming more at the higher speeds, but they remain a much more efficient way of using energy in a context where energy is scarce and should be used carefully, especially when it produces additional carbon emissions. Let me know your thoughts. Discuss in the comments below. In the meantime, I thank you for watching and talk to you soon.